Hi guys, and uh, we are back uh, at the last uh, session of the day on the Piazza stage. Uh, I'm Richard Denning, uh, the uh, um, organiser and one of the directors of the um, Virtually Expo. Uh, and with me, uh, Alex Jaeger of Steve Jackson Games. Uh, and we are going to be talking um, about the speed dating and the boot camp and uh, publisher designer tracks and all that sort of uh, type of thing uh, uh, for the next sort of uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, if you want to um, ask questions, just pop them in the uh, in the stream there, and we'll uh, I'll keep an eye on that, um, and uh, uh, and I'll feed those questions to as and when to uh, to Alex, uh, who can't see that screen because he's got another one. He's going to show us in a minute. Right, I think we're going to go. So the question is really uh, this: actually came out of an email or two that I had uh, this last week or so as we got ready for the for the show, um, and um, we, we were organising the speed dating and the boot camp as we normally um, will. And I guess because there's an awful lot of reorganisation required for this virtual event that we did, perhaps some of the elements of uh, explaining exactly how it's going to work might not have been as clarified by me as uh, as, uh, as maybe it would have been good to have done. So. so we're trying to do this session to try and explain a bit about what this is all about, how it actually works, and give you a chance um, to, uh, you know, have a bit improved opportunity or chance to maybe get into this speed dating um, and boot camp and the rest of it next year. So, um, you ready, Alex? We'll we'll fire up or we'll get going, and uh, we'll start then with what it's all about. Then, so how does the system work? So. We, we started doing this whole publisher designer track um, right from the beginning years of the Expo in some ways uh, with playtest things going on and prototype uh, uh, pitching and so on. But it became more formal in the last two to three years. So, the, so what you have to remember with uh, these pitches is that the publishers have a relatively small amount of time to have a look at them. So we try and narrow that down and make it as refined and as easy as possible. So the process is we, we get you to, to fill in a form with a very brief synopsis of the game a bit of an idea about the genre and the, num the number of players, that kind of thing, which you send in. And then we also ask you to, to email us in a, a sell sheet and a um, a set of rules. Um, and um, another thing that's coming with, with, with Alex with the boot camp has been a, a video this, this year. Uh, I'll let Alex explain that in a, little, in a moment. So the, the, the sell sheet and the rules are meant to be sort of like roughly one or two sides of A4, very short, compact um, idea of the game. Now, Alex, you actually wrote to, uh, some tips for uh, for this whole how to do sell sheets and how to do rules and things for us, which uh, we have been using. So do you want to explain those uh, those concepts a little bit more? A lot of what we, in the same way that uh, if you are being evaluated by a company, uh, having a game design that you'd like to have a game, mm -hmm. uh, ha have a game looked at by a company, a sell sheet is basically a business card for your game. The same way that you have a business card that you give to someone as a reminder that you have met and that you, you know, you, who you are and what you, what you have accomplished or why you're there. You have a sell sheet, which effectively uh, does that for games, which means that there are certain elements that are required on your sell sheet in the same way that there are elements that you would not leave off of a business card. If you do a business card and you don't have your name on it, that's not a very effective business card. If you have a business card that doesn't have a way of contacting you, an email or a phone number, that's not a very effective. Uh, so you know, it's not a very effective business card. And sell sheets ultimately uh, require a certain amount of that information as well. So a lot of the kind of basic things that we want people not to do, if you've never made a sell sheet before, we want you to know that you need to put your name on it. We need to put your email on it. You should have basic descriptions of your game and why the game exists and have a picture of your component parts. It's a way for you as a new designer to frame the experience of presenting your game to someone in a way that isn't just you describing your game. And the sell sheet causes you to have to think about it in terms of uh, not necessarily a marketing package, but a way of being able to so Alex is just uh, temporarily frozen there. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear us, Alex. At the moment, you've sort of uh, just frozen on me. Um, I think I'm coming through. Am I? Uh, oh, no, I think you might be back with us. Let's uh, wait a moment. Okay, you uh, can you hear us? Okay, there, Alex. I can hear you. No yeah, problem. No, you're back. You're back with us. I think for a moment you. Uh, 
Are you frozen things? You're just telling us about the cell sheet there. No. Uh, so I don't know how much you missed, but basically, again, a sell sheet is like a business card for your game. It needs to have all the information that you would have in order to describe your game and have yeah. someone contact you about your game. That's the important part of that sell sheet. Yeah, no, we, we actually got most of that. It was just the last second or two, actually. So that, that that's fine. Yeah. Now, the other thing we asked them to, to, to send in, and I'm going to come to the uh, chat question in a moment. There's one very specific one about this, which we'll come to. But um, about rules sheets, there's another thing we also say to them is to send is to send a sort of a one-piece A4 set of the rules. What's the what, what what's the importance of that? Uh, particularly if the game's maybe in partial development, they're not quite sure exactly how the rules are going to work in exact details. Um, what, what, how would you answer that? There are several people uh, in the industry that express this, and so I, I certainly don't want to take credit for it. Mm -hmm. But um, it, the the concept is until you have a rule set, you don't have a game. You have an idea. You have something that you can put on a table, you can tell somebody about, and possibly even play. But a rule set forces you to think about the about your game and the structure of your game and how your game is going to work, and communicates the the way your game works to the outside world. The rule set is so critically important to being able to under to making sure that you have understood the steps involved in how to play your game, and thinking about things that you may encounter during the course of a game so a rule set is basically a minimum check mark that says mm -hmm. this game exists and i have done enough work to be able to structurally express the concept of the game to somebody uh, through this medium so sure. rule sets are important to basically kind of define the transition from i have an idea for a game to i have a game that can be played Okay, so um, we, uh, I'm, I'm going to come in, in, a, in a moment there to uh, uh, how the selection process works. I'll come back to that. Though. There's another question here about um, is there, a, is there a, a, some sample um, cell sheets? Is there some uh, checklists and things? In fact, yes, we normally put links to quite a few example cell sheets on, on our um, web page for this, and we will do, we'll do it again next year. It's potentially possible with the whole virtually thing that or rearrangements, things that didn't get quite um, put in there. But I, I think we did link to things. But anyway, we will do. We'll make sure that before next year, the examples of, of good-looking sell sheets and things like that are on there uh, so that you can go away and have a look at that and things. Okay, uh, And that will also include checklists of what the, the important bits of information that should be on there. And when, before, before I release that again for next year, I'll go through that with Alex so, um, and make sure we, that, 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 that that's a good-looking page with all that info on um, so on to move on to the selection process. So what we did, what we do with the, the selection process, I'm going, to, I'm going to deal with speed dating. I'm going to ask Alex to come into boot camp in a moment because that's uh, that's his um, that's his um, actually event. Um, so speed dating is um, where people designers pitch games to to publishers. The way we do it is normally a five minute process of a pitch, five minute of questions. Um, uh, well, well, in terms of, we'll come to how it happened at the show in a moment, but the actual selection process for the speed dating is done by sending in your sales sheet, sending your rules in. I then send that out to all the publishers. So we had somewhere in the order of 100 of these. They all get all those sales sheets, all those rules, all those initial concepts sent to them, and they select, uh, for our event, three. They choose three. They choose their number one, their number two, their number three. And from that, because there's a finite amount of time that we can do this, we will guarantee their number one. We'll try and get as many of their number twos in as possible. And number three we'll go to if uh, we need to fill, fill some holes. Um, so that's how we do that. How about the boot camp? Um, how, does that, how do you do that? The boot camp, um, I, what I'm trying to do is look for designers that are, are new to the process. So yeah. if you're an established designer, you've got six or seven games published, you're probably not the right candidate for, for boot camp. Um, you are, we're looking to get a mix of people in. So I, I, like, to, I like to look at, at what's there and say, okay, so we have a couple of people that are doing uh, dexterity or toy style games. We have a few people that are doing Euro games, some people that are doing party games. Um, I try to I, I try to be aware. Uh, I usually go out and follow some links and, and you know determine that uh, it's that the game that's being presented is maybe not necessarily one that's already been packaged and sold. Um, it, it, again, the game the, the, the idea is we want you to bring a game in that you are actively pitching to publishers or that you're actively working on towards self publication and 
the process is designed both to give you an overview of the industry as well as then talk about the specifics of the elements that you produce for the for the for the, the seminar specifically in this case the cell sheet and the and the video so uh, again we're not looking for anything that's been super polished or somebody that you're working you know you've already done a bunch of games and so a lot of this stuff is old pat um, really trying to find ways you know making sure that the people that we select are people that that are going to benefit from uh, a lot of this this knowledge that you know it's, it's a lot of a lot of information about the industry that you probably haven't had a chance to hear before and a chance to have your your material critiqued and see other people's as well i think that's the important part of this process to mention as well that when we talk about having a sell sheet your sell sheet is going to be used as part of this seminar and all everyone that's participating is going to see it we're going to critique it we're going to talk about its good things we're going to talk about the things that uh, maybe are are, are, are ways you can improve it so it's also it's also a, a, it's a sort of a humbling process to be able to you know the, the taking that leap of faith that you're going to put something out in front of a lot of people and someone's going to look at it and give you an evaluation uh you know that's that's kind of a it's you know the, the people that are involved with that are going to that's something you've got to be ready and prepared to do so um, a lot of it though comes down to getting a good mix of people that are new to the industry that uh, are excited and, and want to, to learn more in, in the context of perhaps their first mm -hmm. design or the first design they think is ready for, for you know, prime time. So you uh, also, um, for the boot camp this year, we added in um, video uh, pictures for the boot camp element, not some uh, not the uh, speed dating element to do. What did you uh, select to do that? Um, what was the idea there? So typically the two things that we would do as part of the uh, of boot camp was to critique sell sheets and then we would do a five minute demo so you'd actually do your what would effectively be your speed gating demo mm -hmm. uh, in front of everyone else and it's it's such an interesting thing because uh, for designers so often you're kind of working on your own material and you're working on the thing that's that are attached to your game mm -hmm. you don't get a chance to hear everyone else's pitches as part of speed dating and i think that's a really valuable thing to be able to hear what other people you know, you've got the same five minutes that everyone else does. Uh, how are they using their five minutes to communicate about their games? Uh, you know, are, are they doing something about theme? Are they really kind of jumping right into rules? Are they are they trying to set a picture? All of those things, uh, how people approach that five minutes is, can be wildly different. And it's good, I think, for people to understand uh, in context what those different pitches can sound like. So the idea was you would typically if we had done this in person you would pitch your game to me as as if i were a publisher and everyone else would stand around and get a chance to hear your pitch and we mm. could talk about it afterwards in this case we can't obviously do that um, and i think more important there are so many publishers that are now using video as a step of their process mm. that that being able to get online to be able to create a video however low tech that might be that will present your game is just as important so effectively we just took that five minute demo that you would do in person and said right. do that in a video version okay that's fine so um in terms of the actual way that um the speed dating works then how it works in practice and then in the real in the real world and then we'll have a look at the, the boot camp as well though you've explained quite a bit of it there already actually but uh, we'll see if there's uh, there's extras to that to add so in terms of the speed dating what we normally do at the real world convention which we all hope to get back to as soon as possible um is we would invite you along so we so of the, of the over 100 or so um applications we narrow that down and this year we actually launched it with two streams we were going to do and we did online do a heavier weight sort of strategic euro e wing as it were and a sort of lighter uh, more abstract party game sort of a style wing in, uh, because there, there are different publishers out there now some publishers do everything but there are quite a few publishers who specialize in one area or the other um and you know so with the uh, what we found in the past is that we had tw um, 15 or whatever it was pictures some of the publishers would say well that's a very very nice idea but we don't do party games um and so on oh that's that, that's really a bit too heavyweight for us we, we you know we do do party games so uh what we decided to do was split it and i think that would, would have worked quite well we'd have had two sort of parallel things and going on um but of course then obviously pandemic came along and we thought well okay we'll do the same thing um so though of those 
95 entries, there were roughly 45 that fell into each category, conveniently. And from that, that boiled down to 11 or so that we selected for for the night. We then, um, and you in the real world, you come in, you sit down, you put your game on the table. Um, so some some somebody uh, goes around with a bell or a foghorn or something, and 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 every and, every, and basically blows the thing after sort of uh, the five or the ten minutes is, is up and, and and the publishers move on. So you as a designer have your stuff on the table and typically the publishers move on circulating the room. Uh, and we have stopwatches and foghorns and bells and, and so on and at some inconvenient moment one, one publisher goes the wrong way around the room and the whole thing falls apart. But <laughs> that's the that's the idea. Now in the online version we, we basically said well we can't do it's going to be difficult to actually do that kind of thing. So what we did is we got we got all the publishers in there on Zoom, um, and then we invited the designers in one by one um, into the thing, and they did their five minute pitch, five minute questions, and, and on we went. Um, and so that's how we that's how we did it. And I think the general feedback from the, the publishers was it, it worked pretty well. They were able to rattle through you know eleven or so things in two hours. Um, and um, I'm, I'm aware I think of a one or two that have had even designs that designers that have had contact since. Um, about possibly going a bit further so uh, as a way of dealing with this situation um, and I can see that being used more these online versions more in the future so what about the uh, anything further with the boot camp um, in terms of how you how you uh, the, obviously the slight differences between the online and the real world as you've already as you've already said I think we manage I, I think it translated pretty well to the to the, the online format mm -hmm. uh, and uh, here in a second, we'll go to the, the slide I have here. But um, one of the things that, that I think the video actually was a really good add as well as the cell sheet. And part of that is actually probably best illustrated by one of the one of the sequences, one of the things we talk about as part of bootcamp. And I've got a, a PowerPoint here and I'll kind of wait for Richard to tell me that we are enabled. But yeah. uh, I'll, bring so, I'll, bring, I'll pop across that now. If I, um, I've got I've seen the cool questions there that are uh, about things i will come back to those in a moment guys okay yep. uh, so, right so hopefully if i transition across you it should be on uh it'll take a few seconds for it to there we are i think we're on and uh hopefully we're so, still coming through on sound <laughs> one of the things that we are i think is, is is really critical to understand is is the way that the the way that pitching games has evolved over the years and so uh, John Zinzer of, uh, Alder, of, of AEG, Alder Tech Entertainment Group, wrote a blog post last year that I thought was just marvelous, talking about the way that they handle uh, online, you know, how they, they handle submissions from designers uh, currently in their house. And, and uh, I, I, th this kind of illustrates the steps. You can go out and, and find that blog on, on the AEG site. It's an excellent blog. But ultimately, the, they receive somewhere between 50 and 100 submissions a month, which is a tremendous number. That's a huge number to have to process. Uh, based on sell sheets alone, they'll reject half of those games. Beyond that, then they're going to have, if you had the last for a play video, and off that play video, they're going to reject another 40% of those games. After that, they'll have a Skype session where they'll look at you, know, they'll, they'll play the game and actually have you on live. They're going to reject 7% of what's left there. A full play of the game, so they'll actually sit down and, and do the game from beginning to end. They're going to reject another two and a half percent. They'll stress test the games, and coming out of that, there's one to three of those games that they may actually say, This game I think we're interested in, we'd like to think about publishing. And then after that, there are, there are still games that may come up that they're a game that they have, they get pushed and get pushed again and pushed again. And at the end of the day, they say, Hey, you know, we know we really like this game, but obviously there are other games that have jumped in the line, ahead, jumped in the queue ahead of it, and they're not going to, to to publish it. And so, literally, what that that process takes is a thousand submissions a year, just take a number in the middle of that range, and drops it, and, and literally shows the process by which you go from a thousand submissions to one to three published games a year. And the important, and you can look at that schedule and look at and look at that list and see just how important a sell sheet and a play video are to you as a designer. Mm -hmm. Literally 90% of your chance of going through at AEG is based on the quality of your sell sheet and the quality of your play video. So um, in a real life setting, this is something that uh, actually adding the video this year is probably a more practical thing than than displaying and you know than actually having you do the video pitch or the, the demo pitch in person 
which is still a very important skill. It's something you need to know how to do and to do well. But if you're looking to try and, and get a design placed with a publisher, right now, sell sheets and play videos are just as important as anything else you could imagine. Okay. Uh, right, we don't, we're done with that. I'll pop it. I'll pop it. Uh, that's a very good sort of, there's come some, several comments, so that's useful stats and information quite striking isn't it really and uh, it is and and um, for people that that yeah. kind of say oh my goodness i you know people are telling me no about my design yeah. uh, we are no longer in a place where where having a good design is means you're going to get published mm. uh, everybody because there is such a wealth of of information out there for a game designer to use between blog posts and and proto spiels and unpubs and all of those sort of things. If you are serious about game design, you are going to create a game design that should be good. Mm -hmm. So ultimately there are all sorts of factors that now play into the decision of, are you gonna publish a game? Is it the right mm -hmm. price point? Is it the right feel, you know, the, the right components for the kind of games that we produce? Mm -hmm. All of those things can, if you're not you know, you're not lockstep. If you're not literally, if you've got a thousand to choose from, you can narrow in on those things so specifically as a publisher that yeah. you can see an excellent game nowadays and still tell it no. Yeah, yeah. So, in fact, yes. There's a, so there's a few follow-on questions coming up here. Um, <laughs> so, first of all, I mean, this is the thing we do get. Um, I've had several emails from from designers sort of saying, um, you know, can we get feedback on what we said or can we get feedback on why the cell sheet didn't work can we get feedback on 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 maybe why we haven't been picked up after the speed dating and of course um generally as an individual an individual sort of thing um that's not going to be going to be possible more generic broader feedback is we try we try and get from obviously the publishers and we we're, and you know, try and put together sort of more information and we'll put it on the on, on the site as we move towards next year tips and things uh, we might come some tips towards the end um, if um, uh, about how to improve your chances. Um, but um, the problem that basically is publishers are very, very busy. You can look at the number of uh, submissions. They really don't have the time to be sort of um, looking at um, them all and giving individual replies to everything. Uh, they've, they've just got to make those very speedy decisions, haven't they? Um, and, and it's the same way as when you're pitching games in person yeah. uh, you really need to hook someone in the first 30 seconds to one minute of whatever it is there you know if it's a yeah. video first 30 seconds is going to really tell a lot of the story of whether or not yeah. Yeah. the game is one that you you want to publish and similarly uh, you know i don't need to see four minutes of rules if you've given me in the first minute the information that i need to kind of assess your game and assess the level of your game so another question here was um and this is actually more the speed dating side so i'll probably answer this but you've obviously seen this in the past as well and you may have some observations so it's were you happy with the amount of interaction between the collective publishers and the designers pitching this is the online thing i think specifically here um oh, and it might also relate to real world so we'll, we'll look at it both ways designers were pitching to all the publishers at once so this is obviously the online version uh, having spoken to several designers they were not asked many questions uh, and they felt uh, and had very little feel for what the publishers were thinking. Uh, would there be more co uh, more more questions if they're in so smaller groups? So I mean, I think that this was how we had to sort of do things this year because obviously we have find a method of dealing with this. Um, and it was better to do something than not to do the speed dating. We very much felt, and I think that there's certainly the feedback from the from the from the publishers that there was a good there were lots of interesting ideas. Um, but yes, you could sometimes. I wonder whether the publishers felt slightly awkward being on the same thing, and they didn't want to show their cards a little bit. I wonder if that does that go on a little bit, you know? Uh, I wonder that, and I wonder whether you're at a table face to face on an individual basis, you're more likely to get a slightly more personal conversation um, I'd, going. I'd yeah. almost say it's the opposite. I, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, having having done this as a publisher for a couple of years um you know the dirty little secret is is that oftentimes you're going to be you're going to have an assessment pretty quickly whether or not it's a game you want to publish or not mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. a game you don't want to if it's the game you're not going to publish oftentimes you'll try and come up with some some basic information you know something to ask to, to be polite to to kind of assess that but really at that point you're more looking at at uh you know having a relationship so you you've now met this designer should you meet them again in the, in the future you have a sense of kind of how they design games and whatnot oftentimes yeah. after the speed dating all of the publishers we go out in the hallway 
and we talk about like, you know, well, what did you see? Well, I, you know, I, I saw everything. I thought it was a nice effort, and you know, it's like, oh, that game that was kind of disappointing, and then maybe that game, you know, that 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 was interesting, but not really my thing. If you're not, if there's if there's a single game in there that no one is talking about in that little meeting out in the hallway, that's the game everybody wants. Hmm. Literally, it is that idea of I don't want to tip my hand and I don't want any of them to know what game I want, but I am going to go find that designer as soon as I can and uh, try and get my, my, my card into their hand. So <laughs> sometimes you almost have that kind of poker face when you're yes. dealing with designers because you don't want to, don't want to you know, <laughs> show revulsion or, or, or dis displeasure or anything like that. Um, uh, and yes. then there's that balance of I want to show that, that yes, we like your game. Uh, and then there's that sense of I really don't want to tip my hand that I really, really yes. like. And I wonder if that's even well. Yes, it's interesting to see that last with the um, and, and where the publishers were great to be honest. And and uh, but I think uh, there were certainly poker faces out there, <laughs> you know, at times. Um, yes. And I think I think as you as the designers, you must be you could probably thinking, well, give me something to go on here. <laughs> you know, is this good? Is it bad? Is it you know? It's just I'm wasting my time and it and I can be really quite hard and I'm sure. Um, but yes, I mean we we'll we, we'll see if there's any tips that we can draw out uh, from our observations about things. Um, okay, so we were looking at we uh, we were that's sort of sort of laid the scene for sort of like almost the um, the process of of uh, how we select it, how you get onto it, and things. Um, how did it go this year? And I suppose so that we've had some some of what you asked there is sort of relevant to how it went. Um, I think um, you know. Pro the process, the mechanical process, worked pretty well. People came in, we got them through. They they in and out of Zoom. Um, I think there wasn't any particular problem. Um, um, we're reliant on tech a lot here, aren't we? And there are times when people's sound um, quality obviously is, is is variable, as we've we've, we've found uh, several times over this weekend. So far, when we've been doing streams, that come you know sound comes, videos go, um, and if you've got your five minutes of pitch and suddenly your video breaks on you or something or you can't get the screen to share or you, you they the sound on the video is not working or the any of these things can be, can make it quite difficult to do an online online presentation um so um i think um i i felt i looking at looking at things i felt that uh one or two of the presentations um yeah, they, they're probably taking a good amount of time to try and get all the tech as, as reliable as possible. Choose a good location, make sure the sound quality is as good as you can possibly make it. If you possibly borrow a, a decent microphone, use a headset and microphone rather than you know if you can do it because it does improve the the sound. You've got a mate who's got a proper podcast <laughs> mic, use it. Uh, try not to move the cameras around too much because all the light can be confusing and jerky. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, there's all sorts of um, um, things, and I think uh, so. That's one problem with online that you don't get real world because you know real world you just got to get your pitch going, haven't you? And you're not there's probably not going to be any tech issues um, nope. at all um, unless you decide to play a video as part of the pitch and. Um, and then that well, you drop work. your prototype on the ground before you try to pitch it. Yeah, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose <laughs> things like that do happen. Um, but I mean, by and large, from that point of view, I think uh, things went went pretty well. What about boot camp? Do you how did it work for you? No, I think uh, everything. Everyone showed up. We always seem to run a little long, so we say it's a four-hour block, and I think we ran four hours fifty minutes this time. <laughs> so uh, we we took that extra. You know, most people stuck around. They were kind enough to to stick around simply to, to get through our, our final things. But um, yeah, there's so much, and it's always interesting because we try to, you know, we have our, our kind of bullet points that we want to hit uh, through the course of it. But mm -hmm. um, it is, it's always interesting what people are concerned about. So perhaps you have a lot of, mostly the people there are there to pitch to publishers. There are some people that are there for self-publishing and, and everything, you know, so often now there really are two different ways of, of you know, when you talk about a sell sheet, well, there are sell sheets you show to publishers and there are sell sheets that you show to, to, the, to the general public. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a demo. You have demos that you do to the publishers or demos you do to the, to, the, you know, to the general public, depending on what you're doing. So a lot of what, a lot of what drives the, 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 the actual content once we get past the general topics that we bring up 
or what is important to the people who are, are part of the boot camp. And so, you mm -hmm. know, we hope that people will always be engaged and will will we'll have questions that will come up as, as part of the process. And, mm -hmm. and by and large, that's, you know, what happened this year and, and it happened last year when we did this for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea that, uh, you know, people really are, are interested in, in getting information about this process that, so often seems to be a black box. You know, there are game designers and there are games on shelves and what happens between those two things yeah. uh, sometimes can be a bit of a mystery and, and is different from place to place. It's certainly different in the US than it is in the UK or in Europe. And so trying to address all of those issues and how they all come together to go from idea to product you know, it, yes. you know, I said, we'd like to let, the, let folks drive that bus a little bit once we get through our, our major points. So, okay, I'm asking, uh, um, what is it now? Um, yes, so someone's saying, presenting for five minutes with five-minute questions. Um, uh, once I like, doing five-minute block over and over was harder. Well, it is, it is quite a lot of stamina required for, the, for, the, for that five minutes over and over thing because you're sort of literally, you, you right from one to the next. You, you, you quick, quick glass of water, maybe, <laughs> and then you're off again. Which I think in the real world one we do, we usually go a break in the middle. But but even so, it's a it's a hard it's a hard on sort of you know, hard sort of two hour period, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Having said that, you have designers who are literally going for every half hour from meeting room to meeting room, mm. uh, pitching their designs as well. So it's mm. not a, it's it's not like this is a skill that doesn't have relevance in the real world. Yes, you know you yeah. you may very well be you have eight hours worth of meetings and now granted it's not the same same five minutes over and over again, but it's the same five minutes over and over again mm. with half hour you know within a half hour block oftentimes. So it's not a, it's not an irrelevant skill that is being taught by doing that. Yes, and so uh, it's an interesting question uh, that I've had, uh, and again by email and also in the tr chat there. That uh, you know, should, will we provide a list of publishers who are present? Now we do that to the uh, for the successful uh, candidates, so they know who they're who's going to be up. Uh, and, it's, and it's sort of, I think I'd, I'd have to go back to the publishers to ask their ask their permission. But do you think it's a, it's reasonable for the candidates who are pitching their thing to know who 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 they who has already seen it? If you see what I mean, so they don't have to. Both of the same publishers again, if you like. It's actually how one of the questions in an email came through. He said, "If I know, if I know that a particular publisher, I don't know, take what Steve Jackson Games, uh, has seen my pitch and doesn't want to know any more about it, uh, then I'm not going to bother them any further." Um, so, so handing out the list of who took place might to part, part might make sense for that. Um, so we'll have a think about that, and um, I, I don't think there'll be a major issue with, with that. But I think uh, we just have to clarify that with the publishers to make sure they're happy to, to, to right. know. Um, so okay, so okay, so I think we are. How are we doing for time? We're not. We're not doing too badly. It's twenty two now, so we'll uh, we're coming towards the end of things. So we're coming towards last couple of bits really, which is um, um, the tips for improving the chances of getting selected to take part in that initial. Bit, the, the get to the speed dating or get to boot camp in the in, in the beginnings of things and then tips for getting uh, picked up by publishers so should we deal with the first bit first what are the chances of how do we how do people improve their odds of getting um in now from a the one thing I would, I would say from and, and this might be something that Alex will say that all this is a load of rubbish but from a publisher point of view so from a from an organizer of the of, of the of the UK gamers Expo point of view it's make sure you you've done exactly what the instructions tell you to do so if we ask you to fill the form in online put all this information in the form do as a sell sheet do as a do as a rules um, and we tell you to do that in a certain format do it in that certain format because if I'm getting hundreds of, of submissions and they're not in the format that you've we've asked for, then I've got to reformat and, and do it in the format that they the, the publishers are expecting to see it in. Um, so don't make it harder <laughs> than you have to for us to, to to get things in front of the publishers. You know, so we say send me the rule sheet and the thing as an attachment as a PDF. Don't embody it, embody it in the in the email somewhere where I've got to go and get it or something. Um, so that's just a personal observation. <laughs> <laughs> having to having to process the thing 
Um, but what are, from, a, from a publisher point of view, how would you, how would you, how would they improve the chances of you looking at that and thinking, oh, I want to see this chap or the chap well, S? I think, I think that yeah. you've, you've already you've addressed one aspect of that, which is, you know, did you provide the material that we asked for and on time? Let's put the, put that out there as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the easiest rejections I can do is, uh, hey, uh, I want to participate, and here's my application, and I'll try and get you the sell sheet next week. It's not ready yet. You know, well, yeah. that's not following the directions. That's an easy, it's an easy, you know, you have other people that did. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have people, uh, you have folks that kind of decry the fact that there are these what appear to be artificial barriers that are put in place. And in this case, I don't think we have anything that's terribly uh, outrageous. Everything that's there is designed to make it easier for us to process these things as quickly as we can to, to make decisions. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's, there's nothing wrong at times with being able, you know, again, if you look at, you know, you remember the AEG, that's a thousand submissions they get. Mm. If there are a couple of artificial barriers that make that number go down and they still get 800 submissions a year, that's, that's not a bad outcome. That's, that's 200 people that whatever, for whatever reason didn't follow directions, you know, didn't feel like they needed to follow directions or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, as a publisher, you know, when you're looking at these things, um, ultimately, there are a lot of things, you know, we're not looking for the, you know, in the same way as with, as with a prototype, we're not looking necessarily at the quality of the prototype pieces, and we're not necessarily looking at the quality of the, the layout of, of elements, what we are looking for is that you've done basic things, have you spell check your document, have you, have you presented yourself professionally, uh, for purposes of, of the material that you've given us, um, it is sometimes there are people that get so wrapped up in marketing and the idea that I have to wow you with this game or, or you know, provide some sort of, you know, sizzling marketing uh, thematic elements to this that they lose the fact that at this point we're really talking about wanting to understand what your game is and how it works. And so focusing on the, the elements of the game that a publisher is going to be interested in, things like how long does it play, how many players does it have. Um, you know, basic elements like that are going to be much more interesting and relevant to me as a publisher than it is when you tell me, oh, this is, you know, this is an exciting new game that's never been put out by you know, anybody before and, and involves, you know, three new mechanisms that have never been seen in games before. All of that, I've seen those mechanisms before, trust me. <laughs> if you can surprise me with something, yes, then that's a good thing. But don't, don't tell me in marketing speak, show me in mechanisms. Um, that's just quite an interesting question here. Um, um, is the chosen format um, optimal, um, optimal for designers or publishers? So publishers could choose a different format. I, I, uh, this is probably with the pitching process, um, I guess they're referring to. Do you think they would change it? So would, would a pub, does this mechanism of the speed dating type thing work for a publisher, do you think? Um, basically, that's the question. Yeah, the, the, I think the key is is that is that publishers, you know, one of the things that uh, we never did as an event, and I would be loath to do it, but man, there's a there's a, a perverse part of my brain that always said I would love to do this. It was to have people pitch live. So I would have sit across as a publisher, I'd have sat at a table across from me would be a, a person pitching their design, and underneath the table where only the audience can see it, I have a hand. My hand is there. And at and whatever point that I decide that this is a game that I do not want to publish as a publisher, I'd make a fist. Mm -hmm. And it would shock people how quickly that fist would appear. And so in a five minute pitch, there could be a point at 30 to 45 seconds that I, I've said, nope, this game is not for us. And the rest of that time, I am there looking at the designer to understand how, they, how their design process works, looking at their game for purposes of how how they've handled issues or how they've addressed things mechanically. Um, so, so when you, every time you come into one of these, you should be looking at it equally as I am here to pitch a game and I am here to pitch myself as a designer, because if I can make you say, hey, well, this is not the game that for us, but I've, I've found you professional. I've found your game interesting. I think you've expressed the concept that you wanted to as, as purposes of game design. You've done that well. Mm -hmm. This makes me interested in seeing the next game that you design. So ultimately, when we talk about formats and whatnot, that's 
you know, we want we want something that's going to be easy for us to work with. Ultimately, what we're really looking for is how professionally are you are you are you taking this? How how important is this, and and how does that reflect in the design and the materials that you've produced? Okay, yes, and uh, it's interesting. They were saying, well, someone ob made an observation that the. Uh, uh, we did do a thing called the Wyvern, the Wyvern's Lair or Wyvern's Lair yeah. uh, a couple of years at the um, uh, at the expo, where something similar to to that kind of thing was done, where the publishers were on were on stage and the, and there was an audience and people were pitching it and things. Um, I don't know. We the, at one point we felt the the, the the feedback got to the stage. People were saying it was a bit more of a performance and things rather than a you know and, and actually. Um, people felt they were sort of being they were just there for the entertainment value rather than, right. <laughs> rather than the uh, rather than actually the process and things like that and uh, so that's why we chose to go to private private sessions and, and, and sort of things um, and, and ultimately pitching a game is a pretty private thing it really yes. a designer wants to be able to to pitch their game and know that they have the undivided attention of the publisher or the of the person that they're looking at yeah. a publisher wants to do that privately because they would like to be able to make an opinion in the game without having other people necessarily looking over their shoulder or or try to give away anything to the publisher that's sitting next to you about you know what they believe what they think about the game so uh, yeah there are a lot of reasons why it, right, pitching is not an audience sport um, so Shark we're Man. we're almost out of time on 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 for this so i just wanted to go uh, to uh, to ask a sort of uh, um sort of sort of final question really which is more rather than this whole process of of the pitch mechanism as such um which i think is clearly from what you're saying is the pivotal thing is to get and particularly that first 30 seconds to 40 seconds is the thing and in fact it was interesting to seeing a lot of the presentations that often those first 30 to 40 seconds people were wouldn't necessarily make the best use of sometimes i you know you felt that there were some that were really at it right from the start but sometimes uh there was there, that first bit was was not as perhaps bang dynamic as they as they as as, as they could make it um, but you know um uh, that was that was just a personal observation and um i think that clearly is something that's important though um so they really are you're listening for that first bit and that first bite and things so so don't use your first 30 or 40 seconds to um to, to miss, in a bad way what, what what is wrong use of that time and then i'll ask my final question actually which I'll come back to which is so what what would you like to see in that 30 or 40 seconds i mean so some people showed us almost like a cv of themselves uh, some people asked a sort of question um direct to the publisher about uh, for publishers they sort of say oh, i can ask you a question what do you what do you think about something some people actually played a little mini videos and and so on um so at the start of thing and then they flipped themselves talking further about the game what do you what do you need in that first 30 seconds first 30 seconds i would love to see obviously they will introduce themselves they will talk about their game i would like to see a picture of their component so kind of an overview of the, of the of stuff on the table i would like to know how to win i would like to know uh the mechanisms by which i will achieve my victory and ideally a sense of how many players how long it takes and you know basically that kind of the basic information you know so really it is, really is core important. stuff isn't it it's very and you've got them to get through that amount of stuff that you just said there was about 10 about 10 points or something in in that four thirty forty 30 seconds is you've got to be a bum 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 through all that stuff haven't you you can't be um you know waffling on about general concepts it's the it's hit hit, hit the ground running is what you say the videos really. yeah. the videos and, and and a lot of the videos that we had for the boot camp for participants because we actually showed obviously clips of a number clips of a number of those videos uh many of those people were able to do that in 20 to 25 seconds yeah i would have all of that basic information uh mm -hmm. right there encapsulated in that in that first 30 seconds yeah, yeah. Uh, some people are asking about how whether they could find out more about actually what happened in things like boot camp and this sort of thing i mean um obviously people's actual pictures and things unless they're willing to, to share them and sort of put off, off private and personal and stuff but do you think we might put together in the next few months um more of a um a general sort of synopsis of some of the the, the elements and things and you know uh, to give people more ideas about what what you know what happened and so on rather than specifically think... talking about a given game or whatever I think coming out of this, there's a number of things. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about sell sheets, and and truly this year, uh, the sell sheets uh, were were much better across the board mm -hmm. uh, than they were the, the previous year. And one of the things that, for example, I always, I, you know, and I don't mean it to shame people, but I do this because it's important, mm -hmm. is to show the folder in which I have all the sell sheets. 
and how many people have used the name of their game as the name of their file versus something like vid underscore zero four seven 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 two underscore you know how important that can be if i want to quickly find yeah, information yeah, and i can't yeah. find your video yeah. um so i think i think that maybe doing something for videos in the same mm. way that we did for cell sheets would be important to talk about what should be part of the video and, yeah, and yeah, again what yeah. kind of audience you're aiming that video at and then beyond that there's mm. basic industry information that i think you know is always useful and always valuable is changing which is part of the reason why it's difficult to just kind of put something up that says here's our industry landscape you know mm. snapshot that's almost the industry game obviously anything i had have written 12 months ago would be completely out the window now mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, you know some of that stuff is is probably better live but things like you know talking about how to create a good video from mm. component parts of a, a phone uh and and, uh, and handmade components that's probably yeah. valuable information to share okay okay and um i mean yes that just that what you were saying about the name things when you name the cell the cell sheet and the rules and the video uh you know we say you, you game name uh, you know, have something there that makes it very easy to find things. Because the number of times I had something that said "Expo Rule Sheet" mm-hmm. um, and and not even the name of the rules, um, and I'm like, okay, what, what is that for then? And I'm going to open it up, look at it, rename it, and this is this business of making it easy for us. Just you know, so it was, and there's a folder, remember, full of 95, 100 plus of these things, and the, I'm sharing that with the publishers, so they're looking in that list. So if I if I uh, don't rename it, and they they've got game name or something, expo sheet, and um, they, you know you, you've got to you've got to you've got to make sure it's it's easy to find. So it's nice and alphabetical list of uh, uh, list of games, which is how I actually present the the, the, the sheets to them. Uh, ultimately, I'll, I'll order them by by game name alphabetically usually, um, or you know it can be by the presenter. But the fact is, they're going to look for that name in that folder, and if that folder's not called something different. It's going to make it difficult, but that's a minor thing. So, what? Well, finally, I think we got to the point now. We're going to have to wrap this up. So, um, one um, final thing I wanted to say: the process we've talked about in great detail. Okay, how is the? There's so many games out there, and you're just talking about the fact that chances of something getting published are sort of rel- are pretty small. So, what are the, what are publishers really looking for to make that bang? That's the one we want. The, the, the most important thing, because again, th- th- that was a topic that came up, is like, should we be designing roll and rights right now? Because roll and rights are, are hot. Mm. Um, you need, as a publisher, you should have an identity. You should have a really good c- grasp on what it is that you do well and the audience which is looking at you for for expertise in that area. So, you know, in Mayfair, train games, man, we knew how to sell train games. We knew where those train games people were. Mm-hmm. We, could, we could sell a train game and predictably know exactly what was going on um, but you know every every company has identity and that identity is reflected in the games they publish and even you know basically in the catalog that they have so you as a designer should be looking for those publishers that do that do games that look like the game that you have and aren't necessarily you know a, a, you know, a copy of a game that they have but if they do a lot of games with toys elements with plastics and things Mm -hmm. that's the place to take games that look like that if it's a solid euro game you have places to take with that so knowing the industry knowing the players that are in the industry having visited their websites and looked at their catalogs and understanding their submissions policies all of that means produce the best game you can produce a game that you find interesting and you find exciting and you think works and then and then go look for a publisher that that has games that look like yours. Okay. Right, so I think we're basically all out of time. Now, there's actually all sorts of feedback and things that have been coming up in here, and um, when you are seeing this, and uh, uh, Kate Lemon, who's in there, she's, um, um, Kate, uh, will be keeping lots of notice of that. Are we good? What are we going to be doing next year? Well, there's a $64,000 question, isn't it? You know, if we're in a real-world environment, then um they we will be going back to i'm sure some format of very much face-to-face environments and things like that and yes in that environment you'll get to see the other designers and you'll get to spend time with the publishers because there's usually a social event afterwards uh lots of opportunities for all of that um and if we're if we're doing if if real if virtual events sort of are have to remain for the for, for a bit um then there is time to refine what we've what we've done this Expo was put together in 10 weeks from a decision to make it happen until now. Uh, so obviously 
there's only so much you can do in a time frame like that and there's all sorts of ways we could have been doing i don't know personal bre breakout rooms and all sorts of things that maybe could have been uh um, added on to this type of event and we'll look at all of that um in the coming in in coming months but anyway alex um that's been a great, great session. Um, I've enjoyed it, uh, and uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we'll. This uh, someone did ask if this will be available afterwards. So we usually put these videos um, um, on on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm certainly recording it here anyway. So we will get this up on our on, online at some stage, uh, and probably will you. Will we, the, there's good, good some good content here. I think for us to link into for, for next year for the uh, the process to, um, to point people towards. I think that will be the plan. So thanks for thanks for coming online, and uh, I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed the the, the show. I mean, it's a shame not to be face to face in uh, Hilton. I'd love Hotel. to share a drink with you on tomorrow at the Hilton, but yes. uh, it's not to be. But we'll have, we'll raise one in your honor at least. Yeah, so indeed. thank maybe, you for everything. Yeah, maybe it's next year. So uh, this is the last the last slot for tonight. So uh, this will be going offline uh, shortly. But we're we're back on and with the, with the normal producer Lloyd. Uh, we'll be taking the con again at uh, first thing in the morning. Um, so we'll be back then. Uh, good, goodbye. Good night.